guys, welcome to Comfort Life Channel. It's Irina here. I am excited to see you and I really uh, hope that you guys are doing great. That you are doing something towards your goal, health goal or any goal pretty much that would help you to feel a better person in the upcoming years, healthier person. In this video we're discussing um, mindful eating and like a beginner's guide, right? What could be good uh, tips for a mindful eater, a beginner one? Well, there are a lot of controversial thing, uh, things about uh, mindful eating and some of them I don't like, so I wanted to talk to you about that. For example, um, all of us today, uh, whatever time of the day is, I believe, you have eaten something, right? You have eaten something today, a couple years, uh, maybe a couple <laughs> hours ago, a couple years ago you ate, I hope, I hope too. And do you remember what it was? Some people uh, wouldn't recall what it was. For example, me, I would always recall what I ate yesterday even, and I, I definitely know what I'll be eating in the evening. But that's only because I am planning my meals at home because I cook them, so I start, um, I'm, I'm so mindful that it starts with the time I go to the store. I have a list, and uh, on that list it says everything I need to buy because I know what I'll be eating this week. So I don't have this all of a sudden moment, I am so hungry, I'm gonna die, so I have to buy something as soon as possible, and mostly it would be something fatty, fried, sugary, you know. And I don't have this moment because I plan what I'm going to eat, it is so important for me. I know you might say I don't have time, it's hard, um, it definitely doesn't cost you more money, <laughs> at least that is good, but if it is hard for you and if you do not have time and you do not want to think about it, how you could, you know, play it around or put some effort, unfortunately you won't get there if you want to. So there is no tip I could give you. If you want something, you'll make it work, you know, even with the baby steps. So um, mindful eating is a technique that helps you gain control over your eating habits. And you know, it's like when it's mindless eating, it's a lack of awareness, right, of what you're eating. You don't care. Or maybe it's a habit of yours to buy something in a close by restaurant that you just order it, eat it, and forget about that. Um, but you know, you um, need to think about that this is not very good in way of contributing towards your health. And there are a lot of um, cases of obesity and other health issues that come from uh, mindless eating because um, it is not good for food absorption, it is not good for healthy food choices. That is all that really starts from your plate. Now, um, it has been shown to promote definitely uh, weight loss, reduce binge eating and help you feel better, the mindful eating I mean. And um, for some people, even if they do have healthy choices, they cannot um, let go of a habit of eating and watching something. But I know it's very tempting, you kind of have your Netflix right there at the same time and then you're eating your salmon with greens at the same time and it's like, you know, two go very well together, but not for everyone. For some people it is not enough uh, because this way your body is kind of like thinking, what am I actually doing right now? Am I concentrating on the food or am I watching something? Because believe it or not, and I know it, every time I'm going to watch a movie, and especially if it is so, so interesting and you have some free time to finish watching it, you will continue eating, right? So say you put yourself a meal, you're done, the movie's still there, it is still so exciting and you're like, oh, I'm actually not even full yet because we forget that healthy uh, diet makes us full about 20 minutes after we eat it, like I mean protein and healthy carbs and all that. And then we're like, oh, I'll grab a dessert or, you know what, I'm going to get a little more of that salmon and greens, even if it's a healthy food. And what do you end up with? You are overeat. When we overeat, our body has a very much difficulty of digesting the food properly because it's too much of it. So, and we all know that. Now, unfortunately, in our everyday life, we also run around, we were tensed, you know, we were overwhelmed and... Um, we do not have a lot of pleasures in life. And let me tell you something about pleasures. Since the ancient times, there is a certain uh, place in our brain which can give us instant pleasure. Instant pleasure. What is it? Instant pleasure. It's a dessert, for example, 
or it's a bag of chips or all oh, this triggers this place in the brain which gives us this emotion. It is so easy. It is so fast. And you don't even have to think about something else. Say you are all stressed, overwhelmed, you come home. It doesn't matter where you come from, but you're stressed and you're like, oh, I have that ice cream in the fridge that's going to make me feel better. And normally you eat a first spoon, it's so good, eat the second. By the tenth spoon, the taste is already pretty bland and you just continue eating it because you do. And then it becomes a habit and then it is just emotional hunger. Because how to distinguish the two? I'll have a video about that and I'll talk a little more about that because it's a serious problem right now for our everyday life. Um, this way I would just say one thing, if you have kids and they have a plate and you say you have to finish it, please don't do that because um, even as adults, it, it's like, you know, it's like this mantra in their head that they always need to finish their plates, but unfortunately it's not the case. Kids know when they're full and they want to stop, even if it's a very, very little bit. Kids, kids are very different, so in this case. So uh, when the food comes in the picture as the pleasure, it is the easiest pleasure to get. And there is such a variety. And you could get it almost at 2 at two a.m. in the morning, at 3 a.m. in the morning. Anytime it's just going to be driven to you. Can you imagine that? Delivered, right? So what are you doing? You are enjoying. You're not nourishing yourself, of course. But you're thinking you're doing yourself good because you kind of feel a little better afterwards. Uh, same thing for some people with alcohol. But mostly it's the sugary foods. Nothing um, in enjoying your meal, you do not, you know, don't get me wrong, you enjoy your meal and after a meal, a proper dessert would be great. So if we are in France, that would be looking with some suspicion if you're not having a dessert. But how often you would think that I'm stressed, I'm going to have a salad. Never. You never think so. Oh, really? And even if you had a salad, you would think, okay, I've had a salad, now I can go get that ice cream from the fridge. Now, unfortunately, the unhealthy carbs, sugary sweets, and alcohol would really be there in the picture. So the, the pattern is very hard to break because you need to substitute this pleasure for something else. And you don't want to think when you're home and tired in the very evening, what else could give you pleasure? I have a solution for you. Actually, I think we could make another video with um, other things that could uh, substitute. And you need to start with them instead of going um, for the food that would only give you pleasure for a second. So if you recognize yourself here in this scenario, played by me, thank you very much, you need to sit down right now and uh, you need to um, write everything on a piece of paper to begin with that will make you feel good. You know, and I'm pretty sure there will be something else uh, except for the ice cream on the list. So I just want you to hear it. You. I want you to hear it. So mindfulness means that you're focused on the present moment. You're focused on your meal. It means that um, you are calmly acknowledging and accepting your feelings, thoughts, and most importantly, bodily sensations. So when you start eating, and you stop eating when you're really full, not because you want to lose weight and you think that's enough. No, when you feel like you're really full, when you enjoy your meal, when you chew your meal properly, when you have a nice maybe conversation with somebody and you enjoy it, maybe, maybe by yourself. So it is something that, uh, that tells you that you eat for your health. You know, food is not a pleasure. Food is your nourishment because otherwise you won't survive. That's how it's supposed to be there, right? And we forget about that so often. I mean, three times a day almost, every time we eat, we forget about that. So although the ideal mindful eating food choices, um, as I would say, are very similar to Mediterranean diet, if you're into that, you know, it should be centered on vegetables and fruits, season, seasonal produce, right? Whole grains, you could incorporate beans too, seeds, nuts and um, vegetable oils, but you don't cook with them, you add them to the cooked food. So this um, technique, you know, really is something that would mean you need to change maybe your overall diet. But even though you could start with small things, you could start by listening to yourself every time you want to eat 
every time you are having a meal because um, many disorders such as eating disorders even anxiety and depression um, all this is the food related behavior is something that could trigger your poor food choices now I would also say that um, the change cannot come overnight and you probably will need some support and if you feel that you have uh, depression anxiety it's really hard for you to control your feelings or even you feel like your your eating habits are so out of control you need to seek help there's nothing wrong with that that is actually very wise it would be very wise and smart of you to do so to seek help now um, just remember that the change it starts in your head Maybe uh, having a journal, diary, right? Something that where you can write down what you've eaten, what feelings it gave you, and why you were eating it. I think it is a good way to start because this way it brings awareness. You start writing down your feelings, first of all. You're keeping track of foods that you ate. And in the end, say after a week, you could definitely see that maybe there will be even a pattern that after at the certain time of the day, say maybe it's the lunch at work when you're so stressed, you have this situation. Or maybe it's mostly before, just before going to sleep because all day long you've been dieting and watching yourself and just before going to sleep you're hungry and your body finally gives up. You know, the key uh, to not to overeat just before going to sleep is, is to have a very good meals throughout the day. So if you have a proper breakfast, it already is very good for you because you get nourished right from the morning, you have the food going, there are no depletions, you know, you're nourishing your body, you have very good breakfast, then you have a very good lunch. And by dinner time, you don't really crave all those things anymore. Definitely include carbs, like healthy carbs, in your breakfast and in your dinner. Because if you don't, you will be craving carbs and you will definitely eat sweets in the evening. If there is a dessert you want to have, by all means, have a little during breakfast, a little during lunchtime. And then dinner should be healthy, something maybe vegetables and some protein, a little bit of carb, maybe a piece of healthy bread. And this way you won't be hungry if you do that two hours before you go to sleep, right? If your body will be balanced, you know? Now, um, so let's hear these tips. What I do, I have a shopping list. So I know that this week I will eat this amount of fruits, um, vegetables, sometimes actually the only things I need to um, supply myself during the weeks when I'm out is the fruits and vegetables because I might definitely eat more of them and they spoil faster. So um, you will have a um, certain amount of produce that you buy weekly and that will be pretty much the same every week. And that helps you because when you're in a store you mean you have all the choices there. If there is that bar of chocolate that you know you shouldn't get, but it will be very hard, get it. Because if you don't, you will be craving it more. That's very important. Because if I know I have the chocolate somewhere in there, I don't want it most of the time. But if I don't, I would look for substitutions and that might be, you know, worse choices out there. Now, um, you filled up your um, shopping cart with all the foods in your list. So you pretty much have every food for your occasion. But uh, if you buy ice cream, by all means, I'm not, I'm not a hater <laughs> for ice cream. You might think so after this video, but don't buy a lot, just buy a little bit, you know? And if you really wanted two, three spoons, you know, don't really continue eating because the real pleasure and the taste buds that they give us is during the first um, three spoons there. Now, when you come to the table and you want to eat, please do come with appetite. Because sometimes we come, because like, okay, everybody's eating, I'm gonna eat, but I'm not hungry. So don't, because this way your body doesn't want to eat. And a very good tip to stimulate uh, the appetite, five minutes, three minutes before a meal, pour yourself a glass of water and have it, drink it. A uh, glass of water will expand your stomach walls and it means that the, it, would, it would mean for the stomach that you know it expands, the stomach juices start to flow and you are kind of more ready for the meal, the upcoming meal. So if you skip the meal, for example, it's like, I'm not hungry. So if you skip the meal and you're not too hungry, there is nothing wrong with eating just a little bit or skipping on the main dish. Nothing wrong with that. Now, um, the portion. 
it is the hardest probably part because once you figured out your portion the amount of food you need to eat uh, at every meal it's easier what I just say is that for like um, according to the stomach sizes for a woman I'll say it in grams and then you, you can convert it to ounces 400 grams three to 400 grams is one meal for a woman and 400 to 500 grams is a meal for a man one meal I'm not saying um, so if you it means that even after eating it you won't feel full but that's normal it, it's easier for your body to digest it and then you can have a snack like see my ideal day would be have a good breakfast and then two hours after you could have a snack with fruits and then two hours after one hour after you could have dinner and then you could have another snack in the form of maybe a sandwich or some light meal but fruits are better to be in the first part of the day now berries could be after every meal as a dessert healthy option and then two three hours before going to sleep you have your dinner and you never forget about the glass of water before every meal and obviously water throughout the day now I would also say something about appreciating your food which is so hard to do we don't really appreciate so many things in our life because they just come so easy clothes food some other necessities and uh, appreciating your food I'm not asking you to say a prayer or something but just appreciating uh, everything you have in front of you especially if you cooked it you know uh, there's a, a job behind it you bought it you thought about it you cooked it or even if someone cooked it thank very much the cook now it, it really brings the awareness and try to think how all this goodness is gonna do so good uh, to your body also we need to bring all the senses to the meal you know um, they say sometimes if you are um, dieting it's about the stomach juices your stomach starts producing the juices if you're a little hungry even when you see the food especially when you smell it your digestion starts actually with uh, with what you see and what you smell now um, when you're cooking serving eating food you um, need to really just pay attention to the color to the texture definitely to the flavor of course and as you chew food try to identify all the ingredients especially the seasoning that are there it's actually so good like the practice it doesn't mean you really gulp it up so so fast now taking small bites it's like imagine you are in a high-end society somewhere in London and you know you could get a fork you can get a knife and you could really do it slowly you might think I don't have time for that but again I've told you everything about time if you don't have time just skip this video and um, I'm not saying you have to be very slow but you know in the very beginning just to experience that maybe you could do a whole thing there for, like set your table beautifully get a napkin put it on your knees um, make sure you are your back is straight and just have that experience I mean this is really good I, I would even recommend you to film yourself now about chewing thoroughly is very important when we chew we have all the saliva saliva already is breaking the carbs in our mouth they are actually is broken they are broken not in the stomach but in the mouth and um, well eating slowly is something I shouldn't even mention so I think if you follow like you know a bunch of really uh, good advice I've just given you you um, you have a good choice and chance to be a more mindful eater some of the things I understand are not very possible but maybe if out of all the meals during the day you could pick one where you will be that involved it's already a very very good beginning now um, to learn to cope with anxiety about food and um, guilt about food this is a very different topic I would just say you never need to distinguish food as good and bad healthy and unhealthy this is all food and you just decide for yourself what's good what what is desirable what is the best at a certain amount of time because doing that it will maybe it will help you not to feel that guilty and if there is by all means you have rice in the cheeseburger enjoy it every time you have it by all means enjoy it especially if it's not a regular meal on your table so some people have a real difficulty it becomes a habit um, they really are feeling guilty about food I would again consider seeking help 
also, just remember, after we eat something sweet or something um, fried or something like that, we feel full right away, we feel kind of there, you know, we've had that pleasure. But then after a very short amount of time, your, um, the high glycemic index of the food, it all makes you be hungry and faster. But a proper meal with a good amount of protein and carbs, with real food protein, it will take about 20 minutes uh, to make you feel full. This is the reason, say some people say, I want something sweet right after the meal, because even if it's healthy, I eat it, I'm still hungry. So give yourself 20 minutes and give yourself about a week, and I'm sure this habit will go away. Like, for example, if it's really hard, you've eaten a meal and you're like, oh my God, I want my dessert, what should I do? How do I break the habit? Take a book, go for a walk, call a friend, um, start working, start again. This is a good time to watch something, but not eating. Now, um, you have to really trick your mind here because you are the boss. You are the boss. You always repeat it, remember it. Because you feel so much better and lighter after the meal, you know, you're not foggy, you're not tired, you don't want to lay down after, lay down after the meal. Your body will see all the benefits. This is when the body will say, oh, wait a minute, I like it. I want to do it more often. And then what it, it, would, it might become a habit and it should be. So, mindful is a great other things to say with our kids because um, we're not always present when our kids saying something to us. Do you know what I'm talking about? Is that when you're saying, it's like, yeah, 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 but you're thinking about completely other thing. So by practicing that, we also give our kids a great advantage of the parents who are with them and pay attention. And if we don't have that time, you could say, okay, give me 15 minutes, and after 15 minutes, I'm all yours. Same with the meal. So, of course, if you have, again, I would just repeat myself, you have a real struggle with food, you need to seek professional help. This is very important. There is no shame in, in asking, um, there is no shame in asking for help. And if you feel better, just um, maybe you just need some guidance and then you can ask someone for help. If you want to ask me for any help or any um, piece of advice, I would really appreciate um, your asking it and I will do all my best I can do to help. If you have any questions, if you have anything to share with the audience, something that might help someone that helped you, this is an amazing idea. Thank you so much for being here with me and listening to all I've had to say. I do believe it was really informative and it would be indeed helpful for a lot of people. Wishing you all the best. You can do it. You could be a mindful eater and just a person who is mindful in life to begin with. And I'm sure you will be good. Um, you'll be a professional at it if you just want it. No matter how much time you have.